Hello everyone, welcome back to the Conservatory here at Rathbone Manor for another flea market report. Um, it was fairly quiet there today, again I think it's because there was a little bit of rain yesterday and possibly a little drop overnight, but I did actually manage to get some interesting kit again, so let me bring the camera down here and we'll start taking a look. Okay then, so basically um, everything you see here is a star buy for me. Um, I don't know what to say really, where, where should we start? Because um, all this as I say is going to be star buys. Um, the one thing I will start with, just briefly, is this hacksaw here. An interesting looking hacksaw, quite well made, it's non-adjustable, in quite good condition. We have a um, steel pressed um, sheet metal handle on here. But what I'm going to do is with this, this is going to be guess the brand, guess the manufacturer guys, okay? So uh, what you can do is you can um, pause the video right now and take your guess in the comments down below what brand you think this is. I won't show you the brand because it's marked on the other side. We'll come back to that one later on, okay? Um, what we'll do today, we'll start with this little fellow right here. There we go. Let's have a look at that. The chances are this is a, uh, a war finish girder of some description. It's got absolutely no markings on it at all, apart from steel on the jaws. Look, and that's the only markings there are. Um, the quality is uh, quite good. It runs quite nicely. Could do with a drop of lubricant, maybe having the uh, threads cleaned up a little bit. It runs quite nice as you can see. It's a bit tight round about there somewhere. I'm sure that'll tidy up a little bit. So I'm um, not sure what brand that is. One moment. Okay then, so here are my collection of other um, girder spanners here. Um, here is the one I picked up today. Uh, this one here I think is a genuine um, Joseph Lucas girder. You can see how similar they are. This one here is a uh, definitely a Joseph Lucas, as you can see, it's got it written on there. Don't think it's got any other markings on it. Again, looks fairly similar, apart from the fact this one's got three grooves in the roller. This one doesn't. And right here we have the uh, baby brand. German made copy that I picked up a few weeks ago. So it looks fairly similar to this one. The screw's a little bit larger on this one. You see it's got a smaller screw look. How does it match? Yeah, it matches fairly well on that one, look, the screws. So um, whether this is a genuine, I don't know. It doesn't mention war finish on here anywhere that I can see anyway. Okay, so that's the little uh, girder taken care of. Any guesses on the brand of the hacksaw yet then guys? Hmm. Okay then, let's move along to this week's star buys. Okay, so this week I'm going to start with this box right here. Interesting, it's got uh, somebody's name and address on here. I mean obviously um, this is quite old now so I don't really need to worry too much about the address but seeing as I've had to do some data protection training at work recently, which was, yeah, anyway, <clears throat> so uh, I thought I'd cover the address up. But if we take a look here, look at the postage, guys. The postage looks to me like three and a half D, which I think is three and a half pence for postage. And you can see how it is wrapped, look. It's all sealed up. So what have we got in here? And not only that, it was typed. The address was typed on. It's not printed, it's typed. So what have we got in here? This is quite interesting, because I thought there might be something like um, a micrometer in here. It's a set of knives. It doesn't look like they've been out of the box at all, look. They might have been used. Got a little bit of a discoloration on this one right here, look. But they're quite nice. I would imagine these are probably from the 50s, possibly. Stainless steel, I would imagine. 
So she ordered these up and had them delivered. Uh, I don't know what's so special about them. There's no uh, there's no brand on them that I can see, but they are quite quite nicely finished, aren't they? Look, nice shine on the blade there. Look, nice shine on somebody's bonts as well by the looks of it. But um, yeah, quite nice, quite nice uh, knives. I say this one's got discoloured somehow or another. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd pick those up. It's, it's quite uh, quite a nice little set, isn't it? I should probably be um, getting somebody to uh, put those on eBay for me because I'm getting quite a few bits and pieces for eBay now. So uh, yeah, what do you think of those then, guys? They're interesting, aren't they? I hope you're getting your guesses in on the uh, hacksaw here. What brand do you think it is? I shall be taking a look later on, guys, so, you know, pay attention. Let me just take this one out of the equation for a moment. All this lot here... Oh, hang on. Let's take this one out of the equation as well. Where's that little spanner? Go? Oh, oh, there it is. Okay. So, I've got all this lot from one stall. Um, he is definitely a trader. He has quite lots of interesting tools, and I... Uh, I like to go along and see him when he's there, but you have to wait while he sets up because he likes to have a wander around, see if there's anything he can purchase to sell on his stall. But all this lot was uh, 20 pounds. Okay, let's get back to the star buys, shall we, guys? Um, next up is this little rigid, little rigid pipe wrench. I'm quite into these at the moment. I quite like them. I like the design. Um, the other week I got a 24 inch one, uh, this is a uh, little 10 inch as you can see and I think this one is quite old too because we can see some, uh, I mean I've not wire brushed it or anything yet but we can see there's actually some numbers here, it might say, yeah I think it says patent there and we have the numbers 10 inch rigid trademark obviously I'd imagine and uh, what we've got on the other side the Ridge Tool Company USA 10 inch again um, you can just about make out rigid on the uh, dynamic jaw there there's obviously some writing on that side too and it doesn't run too bad either it just needs a bit of a clean up to be honest with you it's a bit rusty and grubby but I think it's um, possibly an early model. I don't think it's too bent either. Well, it might be a little bit bent. It doesn't look too bad, does it? I think this will clean up quite nicely. You know, get it on the old wire wheel and uh, a little bit of red paint. I think that'll look quite nice, guys. What do you think? Any thoughts? And I managed to get a couple of pairs of cutters as well today. We've got this nice um, footprint tin snips. And what I've been after for quite some time some barbed wire cutters but before we look at those let's have a look at the hacksaw right then now I hope you guys have all got your guesses in now because this is the big reveal guess the brand okay so this is quite a solidly made hacksaw I quite like the um, which attracted me to it was the uh, folded steel sheet metal handle on here look that's quite nice it's quite solid it's all riveted together look the only thing that's missing is the little pin just here look someone's put a screw in there so they can actually use it but I'm I'm pretty sure that I can uh, make myself up a much better pin for that for the for, for the uh, little thing here all nicely riveted together it's not adjustable it's very solid it looks like it's been blued moving along to this end we have the um, uh, wing nut here for, for tightening it all up this has got the proper pin in it as you can see there, it's quite nice. So I'll have to make myself a pin up for this end here. Okay, right then guys. Have you got your guesses in? Because I'm going to do the reveal right now. Ready? Yoink. Swordfish brand. Chinese script right there. There's a swordfish. 1304 is not the year this was made. That'll be the model number. Made in China. More Chinese script. How many of you guessed that right then? Yes, Swordfish brand. Well, I'll tell you, it's been quite well made. It's very solid and very heavy. I quite like it. Um, I paid one pound for that. 
Now I couldn't really decide which of these two would be my top star buy. I say I've been after one of these for quite some time. And I wasn't expecting to come across this little beauty either. So let's take a close look at this, shall we? Now you may very well remember a few weeks ago I came across this um, angled tin snips here. This pair of uh, angled tin snips here. I believe these are probably from the mid 70s looking at the colour on them. But this one, um, to all intents and purposes, is brand spanking new. We've only got a little bit of a maybe toolbox wear or shelf wear on there. But just look at the uh, how nice the paint is on these, look. A little bit of rust in there. But they are um, quite stiff to operate. Uh, God blimey, yeah. Uh, wow, they are so tight. They're loose just here. Once they start where well, they should be cutting stuff, they really do tighten up quite a bit. So I don't think uh, these have hardly ever been used, to be honest with you. I wouldn't have thought so. Look. What do you think? Do you guys think these have been used all that often? They're quite nice, aren't they? Quite like those. Okay, let's move along and take a look at the uh, the barbed wire cutters, shall we? Aren't these nice? I've been after a set of these for quite some time now, but they've um, I've, I, you know I've either come across them when I've spent all my money, or they've been too much for me to afford. What have we got on here then? Let's have a look. Got some markings here. JR Limited just there. Any other markings? No. Nope. Flip them over. We've got uh, 9087357. I thought there was. Um, let's have a look. Where is it? Um, a broad arrow mark. Some, oh, here we are. Here it is. Right, so we've got. Um, the broad arrow with one underneath it. What's those numbers in? So it, these could be, hmm, maybe 1957, don't really know, 9082-7357. So these are jolly interesting, aren't they? You can see they, uh, they fold up nice and compact. They should have a little, um, a little pouch for them to live in. Got a hole here. So you can get a lanyard in there, hang them up from something if you wish. They fold up quite nice and small. These ones are not in too bad a condition really. By the looks of it. I know that they've seen some usage. But um, there we go, they fold up quite nicely don't they? And you've got the specially designed tip there. So you can guide it onto the barbed wire without uh, thinking about it too much. Chop. So what can we chop with these in guys? Let's have a look. There isn't a great deal of barbed wire here at uh, Rathbone Manor, unfortunately. So we'll have to make do with um, this here. It's not going to be much of a blooming job for it, is it? This here, multi-core cable here. Let's give that a go, shall we? So just open the jaws up, pop it in there, close them up a little bit right in. This shouldn't take much doing, should it really? It doesn't like chopping that stuff, it's not designed for that, obviously. So um, what about this This rigid cable here? A copper outer layer, some um, dielectric, and then a conductor up the centre. Let's give this a go, see what we can do with that. Chuck it in there. Okay, it's in there. Can we chop it? Let's have a look. Blimey, these things are, well obviously they're there for the leverage, aren't they? Yep, yeah, chop that up nicely. Um, I've got some of this. Where is it? Two and a half mil twin and earth UK mains cable here. <coughs> That'll go in the jaw quite nicely by the looks of things. Can we get it on camera? For goodness sake, get in there, right in. There we go, guys. So it's in there. Give it a go. No problem at all with that. 3mm copper rod, again, no challenge for it whatsoever. Get it in there. Hang on, not that much. Get that in there then. Piece of cake, and it bounces all around the floor too. Yeah, so those are quite nice. I've been after those for some time now, a pair of these, but I think, I think these are a fairly later um, issue. 
and some of the other ones I was looking at. Some of the other ones I've seen were like uh, 1917 and what have you, but I think these are a bit later. But um, they're quite nice, aren't they? I quite like those a lot, actually. Oh, look, little Robin just turned up outside the door here. Okay, the little Robin disappeared before I could get the camera swung round to film him. But yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Alrighty then, guys. So that's my um, flea market uh, report and tool haul for today. Um, what's my favourite here? Well, obviously footprint. I like my footprint stuff. Um, this is a favourite of mine too because I've been after one for some years now. I like that. But at the moment, I'm trying to get hold of um, rigid pipe wrenches like these here. I quite like these. This is a 10 inch. I've got a 24 inch in the uh, workshop there. And I've also got, I think it's a 14 inch aluminium model 2 that I picked up uh, a couple of years ago at the boot sale. This is quite nice. It's unbelievably lightweight as well, having a aluminium handle here. In fact, it's uh, lighter than the 10 inch model. So that's, that's quite a nice one too. That's uh, busy hanging up in my workshop at the moment. So how did you guys get on guessing the brand? I think we've already been there once, but it's um, Swordfish brand. Hopefully you can see there, there's a little Swordfish logo, 1304 Swordfish brand. It's all in Chinese too. I think that's quite nice. It cost me one pound. I like that. Um, it's quite solidly made. I like it actually. It's quite nice. And then we've had the uh, knife set, probably, I don't know, from the 50s maybe, but three and a half pence carriage on that, be a lot more than that these days. And we have um, the Ridge, Rigid, I'm going to have to clean these up because these look uh, these look quite an old model to me, to be honest with you. The Rigid is written slightly different here. But yeah, so uh, what do you think then guys? Please feel free to let me know which of this lot is your favourite? Um, I have several favourites here. Quite like them all, really. Um, a little rigid. I like that. Sort of collecting those at the moment. Um, this is definitely of interest to me. Uh, you know I like my footprint stuff. Come on, guys. <laughs> but this is a, a real curiosity, this one. Chinese branded, swordfish brand, hacksaw. I'm going to have to um, sort this out here, sort the little pin out, I'll make a little pin uh, somehow or another because that's not good enough as far as I'm concerned, a little bent screw in there, that's definitely coming out, I'll make a proper pin for that I think, and get that back together again, but it doesn't need too much cleaning up does it, I like that a lot actually. So yeah, let me know, which is your favourite of this lot here, um, how many of you got this right? I'm still looking for a um, footprint hacksaw by the way, I haven't found one yet. So yeah, let me know down in the comments which is your favourite. Um, you can rewind the video if you want and have a guess at the brand, but um, that's cheating guys and I don't want to see any of that going on. But uh, yeah, okay guys, let me know in the comments down below um, which is your favourite. Um, Let's have a look. This, 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 and this cost me twenty pounds for that lot there. This was a quid. A little rigid. He was actually uh, originally asking two pound, but I said, "Would you take a quid?" And he said, "Yes." I thought, right, that'll do. So we'll definitely have some of that then. Okay then, guys. Well, thanks for popping over to the conservatory at Rathbone Manor once again, and. Um, Hopefully, I might, weather permitting, be going along to uh, flea market number one, which is a smaller one. Uh, this one came from flea market number two, which is a bigger and better one as a rule, but it wasn't, it wasn't that big this week, actually, guys. So, um, I didn't get a lot, but what I did get, I'm really pleased with. Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed um, today's video. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>